Uh, okay, that is a trip right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're gonna open up this Quest Pro. We've been waiting for this for months, but surprise, they sent us all the major accessories with it too. Let's get into this. MetaQuest Pro, it says 13 and up on it. Obviously that's been, dang it. <laughs> that's been Oculus's policy all along. They send you this nice little pull tab that you're supposed to just be able to pull this thing and it just ripped right off. So we'll, we're gonna do this manually. Okay, see that's that was what was supposed to happen. I gotta say a quick thank you. Meta sent us this and sent us this early. So we're gonna have a lot of time to really test this thing out, find its limits and share it with all of you, which I'm really excited about. If you don't know much about the MetaQuest Pro, this is an enterprise focused headset, businesses, creatives, $1,500 is what this thing will set you back. So they have said before, it is not meant for gaming. It's really not focused on that. This is if you have a design team or something, you wanna get a bunch of these and have everybody collaborate and work together in them. This is the pro way to do it. Oh, interesting unboxing experience. That just barely slid off and it comes I mean, gorgeous. Pretty well packaged already towards how it's gonna look even when you have it like in the charging stand. Woo, woo. I actually got to try this very briefly at a convention. You've probably seen that video, but it definitely hits differently having one in your hands and it's yours. Dang, all right, all right. We're gonna set that over on the Asterian stand just for a minute. We got the controllers. Tells you to hold the power button for two seconds. It's got the covers on there. What else comes in the box? Oh, what the frick? I didn't know it came with this. This is a total surprise. It's like a silicone protective cover for when you take it places you're traveling. You don't want to mess up that nice front end. In case you didn't get a look at how gorgeous that is now. May not stay that way though if you're not careful with your headset or you set it down on stuff. I feel like this would be pretty easy to scratch. And also it gets kind of fingerprinty we saw in the demos. So what can you do? I, I wish kind of that that was maybe matte black and not something I'm gonna have to worry about keeping so clean, but at least they provided this as a little extra protection. Nope. <laughs> a power brick. If you know me, this, these things are like gold these days. I, you never get them with anything anymore. A cloth to help you keep that front nice and clean. Keep it show ready. A booklet, which we won't need. We've got the controller charge cable. I just want you to let it go. So you can see controllers here. Magnetic charger snaps right onto them. I was thinking in my head that every Quest Pro came with the charging dock. I was like, aha, okay. They had me worried for a second that they also provided that. This is the charging dock. Whole thing will sit on there, charge it all up nicely. And then we got the little light blockers included. These basically snap in and these are to give you a little bit more of an immersive experience. They don't cover a ton. They're not gonna cover the bottom down here, but they snap right on the sides. Nice addition, at least that those are there. Okay, is that it? I wanna put this box back together, right? This is, this is actually pretty neat the way they did this. give you a nice long charging cable, eight feet maybe. It's definitely over six feet. So that's a pretty long one. I'm gonna go from the power brick here, which is all wrapped up. I always feel like that's kind of unnecessary. Like, okay, sure. It gives me one more thing to peel, but like, was this really necessary? It is a nice looking power brick. I guess, I guess maybe that was kind of necessary too. It's got like the matte black outside with this really shiny edge. Meta symbol right there. <laughs> oh boy, the stylus tips. You gotta be careful. You might lose these. One, two. Let's see how much juice they gave us this thing with. To start, one, put on your controllers. Two, put on the headset, turn it on. Three, tighten the back. No liquid cleaners, no sunlight. I gotta find out this thing even has any battery real quick. So let's, let's jump in here. You got your volume rockers on this side, power button on this side. Ooh, wow. The meta symbol looks three dimensional in here. You can see that it's not a solid symbol like it looks like in the Quest 2. Like the front edge, it's <laughs> it's hard to explain, but it's not, you know, it always just like that one still didn't make any sense, but now you see it 3D, it looks a little better. Okay, they found a way to make the meta symbol look a little prettier. I appreciate that. That first load time though is no joke. Wow. Now I only got to do creative apps and stuff at Adobe, but I gotta say, even in this entry screen, I feel like it is, it looks surprisingly clearer than the Quest 2. And the way they've accomplished that, now a lot of people are angry out there, oh, the resolution's the same, or it's actually lower, blah, blah, blah. We shouldn't talk about resolution with VR as far as numbers by numbers. We should be talking about pixel density. But I've gotta say, like, not only does the words in here look extremely clear, but I can turn my head almost all the way from side to side, 
and I can still see the words really clearly, which speaks to that sweet spot in these that is just so big. They claim this thing has a 55 to 75 IPD, but when you're in it, if you go to the very bottom and the very top, it shows 59 to 71. So I'm not sure where they're claiming that extra bit's coming from, but the sweet spot on the lenses is so big that even if I completely move the IPD to the very bottom or the very top, I can still see clearly. There's a weird little clicky sound in one of these when I push the IPD all the way in. I don't like that though. It almost sounds like they're sanded my gear. And it only comes from one side, so that's why it's kind of freaking me out. Get that to 69 right there. Wrist straps are not a vast improvement from the Quest 2. Those are something that you know I have qualms with. It's kind of like they took the old Quest 1 wrist straps and the Quest 2 and kind of brought them together. So it has kind of this like leathery feel to it. It feels kind of dry and rough. It's not terrible, but then this bit, I found even when I was testing it before, this wanted to scoot down on you. You push it all the way up and I want it to stay there but it pretty quickly works its way down a little bit. I mean, it's a wrist strap, but still, it just seems like something that, that could have been done a little better at this price. Controllers in hand feel phenomenal, I gotta say. There's a nice weight to them. At least they fit my hands really well. It feels like there's a bit more controller length than there was in the Quest 2. Like they just don't taper as quickly. So I feel like my whole hand actually fits on there. They put dual haptic motors in them now. So there's one at the bottom and one at the top. And you feel that when you first turn on, only the bottom one vibrates and it just feels like an extra layer. I like that. It takes them a while to find their surroundings and their environments. But now that I have, they're here. Okay, I'm gonna try and get through this really quick so I can get some screen capture going so you can see what I'm seeing. Even when the words are at the very tip of my vision, I can still read them perfectly clearly. That is a, that's really nice. Please stay seated for setup. All right, if you insist. Controllers came with three out of four battery on each. Gosh, it wasn't until I got it home and got to really mess with it here that I can tell like the clarity in this thing is really nice. The screen door effect is not invisible still. When you look at like a big white panel, you can kind of see each individual pixel, but you have to be looking for it. Adjust the fit wheel. Yeah, yeah, I already did that. I guess it's part of the tutorial and then adjust the depth wheel. Get those lenses nice and close to my eyes like I like them. So one thing here, I can see you actually right now, but even at the closest, the only way I can get these lenses any closer if I really want them to is to lift the back of the headset up higher. It doesn't feel uncomfortable that way. It feels a little unnatural. That right there is about as close as they can get. The field of view feels shockingly big compared to a Quest 2. If you're used to a Quest 2 all the time, it feels like I have a lot of vision inside the headset. Update in progress. So while I'm waiting on this thing to do its first updates, I'll show you real quick how the wrist strap and stylus works. So on the wrist strap right here, if I were to try and twist this right now, nothing's gonna happen. But if I push in and then twist, this will slide right out. Same thing to put it back in, I have to push in, turn to the side, and now it's locked. I did have an issue at Adobe where I dropped the controller once. I don't know if I had somehow unlocked it or I'd been messing with it. Right now in this, it doesn't feel like you're not worried it's gonna come out as long as you got it locked. It is a concern because like I said, somehow I managed to drop one. With that out, they've sent these stylus bits. It's just basically a piece of plastic. I gotta say, it doesn't really snap in with any confidence. Like I kind of thought it would snap and then like feel locked. It's just kind of in there. I guess it won't fall out. And then if you're using that, you can actually use that on surfaces. Doesn't feel amazing on a carbon fiber desk, but I mean, if you were in VR to be doing this, it feels like you're actually writing on a surface, which is kind of nice. It's just a plastic tip. Tiny bit of bounce when it's in there. I don't know if that's a pressure sensitivity. It doesn't feel like a button. It just feels like something you slid in and put in there. We are back in after many updates. It's updating both controllers right now. So give yourself at least like a half hour expecting for updates. It's asking me to go in and use the pairing code here on the phone. So I'm in the Quest app. I'm gonna go to menu, devices, new device. Oh, look at that, Quest Pro, looking for headset. All right, my super secret code, don't look. Phone says pairing inside the headset hasn't reacted yet. Oh, oh, I see a reaction. So it looks like between updates and everything, they've sent us a headset that is now at about 53% battery and each controller is so close to 69, come on. Put your headset back on now and go into VR, all right. Designed for your privacy, of course, Meta's gonna tell us that, you know, make us feel good. By default, Meta only collects the data required for your quest to work properly. Apps can't access images or videos of your surroundings without your permission. You can change your privacy preferences anytime in settings, which is probably where your permissions already were. All right, left and right controller have updated, so hopefully I'll get those back here in a second. The graphical fidelity, though, is there. It looks really good. There's some aliasing around the edges of, like, chairs and stuff in my environment, but overall, like, there's these waterfalls out in the distance, and it looks nice. All right, controllers are back. Share additional data to improve meta. Create a boundary. So now we are in here at our typical 
create your boundary, except instead of being black and white, it is in color. The color looks a little grainier now that I'm in my home environment than I feel like it did at the convention. Maybe that this isn't like an app pass-through, this is just the pass-through to set up your home environment. So that could be part of it, but, or maybe it's lighting too. Cause like, if I look back here where the lights are facing, I feel like it looks a little clear, but when I look that way where the lights aren't, things are a little grainier. Quick play area here. Choose your home experience. It can either be fully immersive or mixed reality. Can I screen capture yet? Let's try mixed reality. Someone asked me a question earlier. Is the pass through good enough to respond to a text on your phone? Boy, I'm gonna say no. If I get it really close, okay, let me know if you need me to bring you anything. Thanks, love. If I'm trying to like proofread the text, I gotta get it like right here to see that's clear out here. Text messages are blurry. It's very clear this is my phone. I can see everything like that. But to read something, no, you really gotta get in close. Device setup is complete. Press that to finish. I'm in here recording some home environment for you to get to kind of see what I am seeing. It looks really good. In true channel fashion here, I am gonna start with the things I am most worried about, about the headset, and work my way through those up until the things that obviously we know are gonna be good or exciting. So the biggest concern on my mind is battery life. So what I'm gonna do is right now, we've got 49%, so we're at about half battery. I'm gonna set this thing up on the charging dock. We're gonna leave a camera on it and see if we can kind of get an estimation from that of how long this thing is gonna charge. And then I'm gonna drain a battery to death completely and see exactly how long this thing lasts. So let me show you how this goes on the dock for those of you who didn't catch the other video. I don't know why they covered that. It's not really sticky or anything. So they assume you're gonna take your controllers off first. The controllers have like a magnetic snap there. See how they're kind of hanging on to each other? So if you do that magnetic snap and then you drop it in, usually not from this really awkward angle I'm doing it here, kind of magnet those in and drop it. There's a bit of a learning curve to find exactly the right spot, but that's on there. So then after that, you're supposed to be able to just take your headset off and just drop it straight in and it should all be charging. I see a light on here. I see a light on each controller. I'm also gonna plug the charging dock directly into the wall, not in a power strip or anything, just so we can get the most accurate power reading for how long it's gonna take. After a long hour and 40 minutes about, we went from 49% to fully charged. Keep in mind that is a full charge. If this thing had been at 0%, we were trying to get up to 50%, would've went a little faster, but still, that's quite a bit if you're draining this thing out. The battery life is something I'm about to test. I'm gonna drain this thing out completely playing a game. There has been some bad press on the battery life. People saying one to two hours was all they were getting. And they've said, if you go in, you disable some of the facial and eye tracking, you turn some of that stuff off, it's really power hungry. The battery in this is technically bigger than the Quest 2. It should last longer than the Quest 2. This first test, I'm gonna run it just as it came, exactly as it is, and I'm just gonna play games for a while and see how long it takes to drain. So we'll be right back. Back to the real world, the official count was two hours and 26 minutes. That was from 100% charge down to absolute zero where the headset actually shut off on me. I was playing full brightness, full volume. For the first two hours, I was just playing Demio. I switched up to a couple other random things after that, some Blade and Sorcery I checked out. I wasn't recording for most of that time, so keep in mind that will also, for content creators, that has a bearing on battery. I only recorded probably five minutes out of the entire thing, just for some random moments that I was having issues. As you're about to see the issue I had with the controllers. See that right there? See how it just jumped? It keeps jumping up and down. And it seems to be something with the way that the controllers are mapping out their environment themselves because if I turn certain ways, it's almost like it gets better. But when I turn again, like see how my hand's drifting? I'm not, my hand is exactly the right distance from my body and I'm not moving my hand at all. Totally weird bug issue that I'm having here. So first controller glitch, first gaming session. I guess that's not terribly surprising, but hopefully that's something that can be ironed out as we go on with software or something. But it actually really took me back to my PSVR days because my hand was holding my controller here and I saw it floating right there. And it would still usually track no matter where I moved it, but it would just stay a little distant. Resetting didn't work, turning around in my play space didn't work. And as you saw in the footage, sometimes it would, my hands would kind of do this number and they'd get closer to my hands, but the whole time they were staying away. After a while in Blade and Sorcery, it seemed like it kind of snapped back or got a little better, maybe because I was turning around in the room a lot and maybe they finally found their points in the room again. But it's something to think about because for the Quest 2, you don't really experience that. Usually that thing is right where it needs to be all the time. For something that costs five times as much, I. I would have hoped that wouldn't be an issue. Now we gotta see how long it takes this thing to charge completely from dead. So we're gonna charge it back up, juice it up. We'll get in Beat Saber and check. My next thing I'm worried about 
is if the controllers can keep up with high speed Beat Saber. While that's charging up for a bit, let's talk about light blockers, something I know everybody's pretty curious about. These are your included light blockers. They come with the Quest Pro automatically in the box. They snap in magnetically. They drop in. They really find their home really nicely with the magnets on their own. I really like that about them. When they're on, they block out the sides of the light, but you still have all of this right here. I weirdly have found I don't really want to use these. Even in gaming, I didn't find they were very necessary, but for some of you, especially it depends on your environment, the one thing that was annoying about gaming with those big, nice lenses it's got is there was glare on the sides of the lenses if there was any light around me. An overhead light didn't bother me, but when I first had these two big lights I have and the lights in the rear here, couldn't stand it. That was all shining into my eyes. I turned those lights off and I was fine. If you were in an area where you couldn't turn lights off or sunlight was coming in, these are better about blocking light, I would say, which they're called light blockers, than they are adding to the immersion of being trapped inside the headset, only seeing the game. I didn't feel like these added any immersion, they just blocked light. So then you go to the full immersive light blocker. This is $50 from Meta, and I believe even if you order these now, these aren't coming, people aren't supposed to get them until like December. I tried this out to see if it would give me that full immersive experience I was used to, totally blocked off. And what I actually found was once it was on my face, it didn't do a whole lot more than the light blockers because I still had this big gap all around my nose. Like with the Quest 2, I could really shove it up there and get it really close and kind of block the rest out. With this, the Quest Pro, the, the lenses are where they are. You can put them the, all the way in, you push the back up a bit, but that's about as close as you can get. So no matter what, it was still sitting out here to where I could see all of this. At 50 bucks, I don't know. I'm not convinced, and there might be some third party ones that come out with better nose light blockers. So that's something to think about with that. For now, at least you'll be included with these, but I'd be interested to know if some of you get this headset, do you end up just never using them? Because I didn't really feel like I ever needed them, unless, like I said, maybe when I'm over in my living room the other place and there's all the sunlight coming in the windows, maybe then. Let's talk about headset comfort. After using it at the convention for quite a while, after using it here for several hours, the headset does a good job. It's really well balanced. You don't notice the weight on your neck. The forehead pad is the one thing that over time starts to wear on me a little bit. I got a wide head and I feel like the forehead pad isn't quite the perfect shape for me. It's a little tight on the sides, it's pushing in a little bit there. So I notice that after a couple hours, it starts to feel a little uncomfortable right here. But the fact that I don't have something shoving into my eyebrows and cheekbones is a huge improvement still. The rear head pad, I don't really even notice that that's there. It sits back there just fine and I like that. I do wish maybe the pad was a little bit thicker on the front or something just for someone like me whose head shape isn't exactly like it. It would help kind of distribute that weight. All things to think about, not necessarily deal breakers, but of course when you pay this kind of a price for something, it's easy to get a little nitpicky about it because you paid a fortune for it. It looks like maybe the pad could be replaced, but overall this head strap doesn't look like there's any way you're replacing this thing. So you kind of have to live with this. Unlike with the Quest 2, we have a million options. You can get it perfectly customized for yourself. Couple more things for thought. We're gonna jump into some more games, get back to you with more thoughts soon. In a shocking turn of events, it took less than two hours to go from dead to fully charged with this. Probably because like most devices, the last 10% is what's hardest to charge with anything, but I thought it would take longer. It took just about an hour, 55 minutes to fully charge it. I've had some concerns about the controllers with the way the cameras track. I'm worried that Beat Saber it might have a hard time keeping up with. So real quick, I'm gonna do a song, set a baseline over here, do the same song over here and see if I notice any sort of tracking issues in the controllers trying to keep up. Eighty-eight point one percent, seven eighty-two out of seven ninety-one. You can tell I'm a little rusty because we almost had the SS, and then I screwed it up real good in there. Doing this in the Quest Pro now, we're not necessarily looking to do way better, but we're looking to see that it, at least we can do as good as we were doing. If we do better, then that's probably a testament to the tracking doing its job. So here we go. Call me crazy, but I feel like this is tracking way better. <laughs> way better. I feel almost like I'm on a valve index again. I did not expect this at all. The controls are so responsive, they're so quick, and the haptics in them feel a lot nicer. There's that SS I was looking for. 90.6%, I missed four notes. I can't believe that, hang on. 
I didn't think, wow, I'm sweaty. I didn't think there was any way in hell this would do better than the Quest 2, and it really felt like it. I'm gonna jump to another song, something that I know is out of my ability, something that's really hard, and see how I do really quick. I've been death so close to death so many times. Oh God. Oh, there it is. When the tracking's working, it's surprisingly good. It's definitely, I think, better than the Quest 2 tracking. It felt a lot more like Lighthouse tracking. The lightsabers were so responsive. Uh, besides one weird issue, I lost my right hand for a second, which happens on the Quest 2 a lot too. Everything was way better. I feel like if you're really good on Quest 2, you'd be great on the Pro, which I can't believe I didn't expect that at all. Surprising result from Beat Saber there, I gotta say. But one of you asked a question that was really interesting. You usually play your Quest in the dark with infrared lighting. Can this headset also utilize infrared lighting for tracking? I would assume the headset sensors, but I didn't know what kind of cameras exactly they put in these controllers. So let's find out. We're gonna kill the lights and switch to infrared here. I've got my old trusty infrared light on the side here. So I should immediately lose tracking when these go out. Tracking is lost, controllers are all over. Okay. I can barely see a light on John's face, which I think is from the viewfinder. And I can see a few little tiny lights around the room, like a Bobo VR light over here. But my controllers aren't tracking at all. My headset doesn't see anything, it's just pitch black in here. To test whether the Quest 2 has infrared capability and the Quest Pro doesn't, I'm actually grabbing my Quest 2 over here and pulling it up. Yeah, I can see all around the room. I can see the infrared light coming from the Quest Pro. I can see it coming from the camera. I could set up my tracking here. Quest Pro IR light is a no-go. If you've been using an IR light this whole time to play in the dark, it's not gonna be an option with Quest Pro. We found something. <laughs> One thing that the Quest 2 struggled with when you play first person shooters because these tracking rings get right in your face if you're trying to hold a sniper rifle or something and you wanna pull that scope up to your eye. A lot of people had problems with this rear hand would drift around, made it a lot harder to play. So we're gonna do a quick test with the Quest Pro over here. Now that there's no tracking rings, now that they do their own tracking, will we be able to get that sniper rifle exactly where we want to? The issue from earlier, I've gotta keep bringing it back up and I'm, I'm hoping this is something they're gonna figure out a quick fix or a software patch or something. What has happened is these controllers mapped themselves to this room that I've been in for all this time. But when I walked away upstairs and I came back, I told you how they were off my hands. No matter how many times I restart the headset, I recreate the boundary, I reset, the controllers are still a good distance away from my hands. Now, I've got a sniper rifle right here in my hands. I mean, I can get that as close as I want in my backhand because it's, it's tracking the room. It's not, the headset's not even tracking. I can, I can get this as close as I want, which I'm not used to being able to do this. Obviously, you're not gonna play with this thing in your mouth, but like to be able to pull this up here and really be able to see your scope. Oh gosh, I'm gonna go get myself killed now. I usually don't play this sitting, so this is kind of weird. I hear somebody. Oh gosh. Oh no, my hands are doing their weird thing again. Oh crap. <laughs> uh, this tracking thing is driving me nuts. Cause it's, it's, it's like the tracking's working great and I want it to keep working, I want to do something. And my hands just, I can't get them back. So if you get into the predicament that I was in with your hands being off, go map out four other locations in the house so it forgets the one you're in and then come back and remap it. And so far it seems to have worked. Even as far as actual just controller wobble goes, which is a normal thing pretty much with any headset, it's very minimal. This hand feels like it's wobbling because my actual hand is shaking. But the steadiness of this is, it's intense. If you are someone who actually plays this sitting, you play at a desk close, you can keep this thing so still. Oh gosh. In a game of Pavlov, if you went up against a bunch of people in Quest 2s and you were in a Quest Pro, you would have a bit of an unfair advantage because you are not going to be fighting unless your hands get four inches off center. You're not going to be fighting your tracking like everyone else is because it's just so steady. Wow. So expressing ourselves in VR, we're going to set up move them in towards the number 66. It's making me adjust everything to where it's gonna be able to see my eyes. Enable natural facial expressions for your avatar. We are enabling face tracking. We are enabling eye tracking. We're gonna calibrate. So right now I see a little dot and I'm just following it with my eyes. Calibration is complete. We can check calibration or finish setup. Check calibration. <laughs> Okay, that's a trip. And wherever I move my eyes, it follows. Oh 
Oh my gosh, I wanna check the calibration again. So wherever my eyes go, this thing is there. And it's obviously not crazy fast, like if I move my eyes really quick, but it, it keeps up pretty well. We're going into Horizon Worlds. The problem is at this stage, there's not a lot you can Google <laughs> to find out, but I don't know if there's other apps that will let me use the eye and face tracking, but Horizon does. It's gonna access our eye tracking data. Uh-oh, we're gonna allow it to have natural facial expressions. Entering Horizon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, can I get closer to this mirror? Ah. Uh, okay, that is a trip right there. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So it's weird because in VR chat, you kind of get used to your avatar being able to move, but it's based on sound. So if you go, ah, in VR chat, your mouth opens. But in this, no tongue tracking. Okay, the smiles creep me out a little bit. It doesn't seem to know how to deal with me crossing my eyes. I'm crossing my eyes, right? It doesn't seem to know how to deal with that because it seems like my eyes are still staying straight. But as far as my eyes moving up, down, my what the frick? It can tell when I'm raising one eyebrow. Okay, this is a trip. I gotta say, this this feels next level. This is wild. Oh my goodness. Now, obviously in a social app, there's tons of uses for this, but there is other uses, even in like PSVR 2 is showing gaming uses where like your HUD, you can quick select something with your eyes instead of having to move your analog sticks around. I can see the teeth in the mouth are kind of weird when I do that. <laughs> I probably look crazy right now. What am I doing? It's not perfect with your eyes, but it does a pretty freaking good job, I gotta say. All right, enough making weird faces at myself. The eye tracking, the facial expressions for social apps, that's a game changer. If you were only buying a headset to spend time with faraway family, it's a lot of money, but this feature would really add to the experience. The new way these controllers are tracked, I feel like this is gonna become the industry standard down the road. You no longer have to worry about occlusion. If something gets in the way of this, you don't have to worry. The headset no longer needs to see it. It can be behind your back, it can be behind your head, it can be right under the headset in your mouth. It continues to track just fine. The only way I could get it to really lose tracking besides its occasional glitches was if I covered all the sensors with my hand. Obviously that's an issue, which would be pretty hard to do, but I mean, if somehow you're playing some game where you were like shoving this in your elbow, maybe you'd find a way. But I've got to say, overall, this thing has impressed me much more than I expected. It's too early to do a should you buy or a final thoughts, but I will say a couple things in regards to that. I can't answer, obviously, should you buy because it depends on the case use and it depends on money. The one thing I can say is that if Meta told me today, hey, actually we decided we're only loaning you that headset, you have to either send it back or pay us $1,500. I would be returning this headset. Sadly to say, $1,500 is a ton of money. But if you are someone who's a VR enthusiast and you can spend $1,500 in a month without starving yourself or your family, this is the best standalone VR experience you're gonna get. Plus you get all of the AR, the stuff we showed at the convention, all that alongside it. And we'll be testing the limits of that a lot more throughout the week. Watch out for those videos. The clarity of the lenses, the controller tracking, the comfort of the headset, the sound was so much better. Not that the Quest 2 had anything to write home about, but actually having the speakers above your ears, when I was playing Beat Saber and that, I didn't miss the fact that this had my external speakers. The sweet spots are so big that you can actually move your eyes around. And when it comes to that eye tracking and stuff, that was just so fun. And you can see where there's gonna be more applications right now. It, it may seem kind of up in the air. But one other consideration I wanna to add to that to think about is, when the Quest 2 launched, it didn't seem like as much of a value as it was at the time because it still had a 72 hertz refresh rate like the Quest 1 had. It had switched to LCD screens instead of an OLED screen. Software updates and everything that's come has made the Quest 2 way better. Will we see that with the Quest Pro? I don't know for sure. It feels like this has a future and it feels like it is the future of AR, VR, XR. Getting to use this headset, it's it feels like a glimpse into the future of what's coming and that really excites me because when the Quest 2 came out, I liked the Quest 2, but it didn't feel leagues above the Quest 1. The Quest Pro actually kind of feels like a fully wireless valve index to me. And a fully wireless valve index would cost you a lot more than the Quest Pro. So it is something to think about there. So what more questions do you have? Uh, we're gonna be going hard with this thing all week, trying to answer all the questions for you. So let me know in the comments what more you wanna know or see as we go through. We're gonna be doing some wild stuff with that pass through. I'll tell you that much for sure. We're gonna have some fun. It, there's so many things about it that just feel like such an improvement. I personally will probably be doing all my gaming and playing going forward 
pretty much in the pro. I still have a couple of Quest 2s and it's great that I can have enough of them now for friends to come over and play. But as far as playing this thing since we got it and then trying to switch back to the Quest 2, you can definitely tell that it's a big difference. You could buy like four or five of these things at that price. It should be a big difference. But let me know what you think in the comments. I wanna say thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a great week with the Quest Pro content. Seems like you're all really enjoying it. So thank you again. And I will see you in another reality.